that Cinema Project was mainly guided by the fact that this building existed. It was in this space. It's in the centre of the town here. And with it being driven by local people, obviously the benefit of it is for local people as well. So it, it makes perfect sense really that if it's going to be owned by the community and operated for the benefit of the community, that it should be done in a way that is inclusive of all and um, offers a, a great service that this area sort of was, was lacking and was crying out for. It, the cinema sort of goes beyond the audience that has just come into the cinema. It may be that someone pops in for a cup of coffee and it's a social point for people. It may be that they go to one of the classes or activities that go on here. But um, the central location here, it, we kind of make it up a, a bit of a, a hub for lots of activity in the area. And I think something small scale is it, it's so much more personal and uh, inclusive in, in, in a different way. Not just allowing people to come in, but actually makes people feel part of the area that they live in. And I think that that's a really nice thing. And I feel very lucky to be part of that. None of our work is specifically entitled Tackling Loneliness, but the experience in Seafine is that a very significant proportion of our beneficiaries will have few or no family and friends. Um, that loneliness uh, is, is a feature, a characteristic for many beneficiaries. Um, so through the range of things we do in the kitchen or at the food bank or out in the community food outlets, tackling lon loneliness is an integral part. Generally, our beneficiaries will have one or more characteristics around low confidence low self-esteem, low skills, poor or no social networks. It's these kind of uh, circumstances are common among beneficiaries. So our work round about employability, health and well-being and so on all relates back and connects to those issues. And that's one bad minute. Basically, the reason I went down that route is so the facility was for everyone. You know, nobody could come in and dictate how it was run, what was being done. Um, and I go on again it's to make it as accessible for everyone. Um, all ages, all abilities, all sports basically. That was as I went down that route. Um, I think the main things, especially in the, in the last 12 months, we've obviously been doing a lot with the Sport for Change stuff over the years. But for me, in the last 12 months, what we've seen a massive difference in is the, the senior side of what we're delivering here. So over 60s. Um, classes and that really shows you the social impact we're having in the town. Um, 12 months ago we were probably taking about 20 to 30 seniors a week um, which is something we identified as not being good enough. Um, we have an aging population in Viruri um, so we targeted that. Um, we now got an activity on every single day of the week, um, Monday through to Friday. That's from a general exercise classes to walking groups um, to even a seniors dance class that we have running. Um, and the main thing for us seeing now is this, yes they're coming to the activity, but it's more to come and see their friends they've made. It's the social side, the impact they're having. They go for teas and coffees together, we see them down the town together, um, they support other things that we're doing, um, they come in and take their grandkids because they know the facility, they're comfortable to do that. Um, so yeah, that's probably the main thing in the last 12 months we've seen major um, impacts on the sport.